On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, we're going to talk about two vital components of shipping, peaches and trains. That's right, peaches and trains. So this image came across on Twitter the other day, and, and I can't think of anything better that encapsulates global shipping than this, a container of peaches that somebody consumed in Washington, D.C., that on it said the peaches were grown in Argentina, packed in Thailand, and then shipped to the United States. So just take a moment and think about that for a second. You, you're raising peaches in Argentina, South America, Southern Hemisphere. It's got to be loaded. It's got to be preserved. It's got to be refrigerated. It has to be shipped halfway across the planet to Thailand, then taken out, not just packaged, but processed, packaged, put back together, put back into a container, shipped across the ocean, the Pacific, to the west coast of the United States, put on rail and trucks to eventually get to your local store. And that is the issue we're facing with global shipping right now. Why are there delays on the west coast? Why are there delays in Long Beach, Los Angeles, Oakland, Tacoma, Vancouver now? Is because you all have to have your peaches. And that peach container is coming from Argentina via Thailand. This is in one small cup showing you the global shipping issue. So let's break this down a little bit and get some details here of what Sal is on today. So what kicked this off for me was this story right here on freight waves. Union Pacific temporarily stopped eastbound container service to Chicago. Now, the Union Pacific is a major class one rail line. This is the Union Pacific map right here. You'll see that they operate basically pretty much from the Mississippi over to the West Coast with a huge yard here in Chicago and other terminals along the way. They service the Long Beach, Los Angeles port. And one of the things that this story says, this is on freight waves, this is another story here on trains.com. I'm sure we all follow trains.com. I know I do. Uh, Union Pacific suspends inbound international container, container shipments to Chicago for a week. Basically, they're stopping, putting a hold on everything coming from the West Coast across because their global four terminal in Chicago is basically to capacity. And not just them, but other terminals along the way are capacity. And more importantly, they can't get them into the feeders, the BNSF Railway and North, uh, Norfolk Southern. And so what you're talking about here is up to 40,000 containers will be stuck at West Coast ports over the next week due to this embargo. And I love the term embargo right there. Uh, this is going to have a domino effect on everything. If you cannot get those containers out of those West Coast shipyards, you can't bring more containers in. There's a finite amount of space that you have for this. And it's this issue that is generating a lot of problems. The carriers, the 10 big shipping companies that control 85% of the, uh, of the trade are basically making the argument, listen, you know, through the World Shipping Council, again, the most evil sounding organization ever created, the World Shipping Council, basically is arguing, listen, it's not us, it's, it's, it's the infrastructure, it's your infrastructure, United States, that's not moving these containers. And I got to say, that's partially, it's partially true. Uh, but there's other issues at play here. It's not 100%. And that's something to always be a careful of. Now, when you add to it, other issues, you see it magnifies. So this is a story, a couple of stories right out here at G Captain. This container freight rates to top $10,000 as shipping crunch tightens. I can't tell you how insane that rate is. $10,000 to move containers. People were moving containers for two, $3,000 not too long ago uh, in, in spring of 2020. My God, you could ship five containers for, for this amount of money here. And understand what they're doing is basically bidding out container slots to shippers. You know, if you need your stuff good, you're going to have to pay. And this story talks about it. the spot rate for a 40 foot container from Shanghai to Los Angeles increased to a record $9,730 up 1% from the previous week, 236% higher than a year ago. So right now it's through the roof. The Shanghai to Rotterdam rate rose to $12,954. You wondering why they wanted to get ever given out of the Suez? There you go. Uh, this is just an, an amazing surge. The composite index across eight major routes 
it's up 339%. And all of this is building on a host of other issues on here. So this, this story goes on here to talk about port congestion, but let's just go to this story right here. This is, again, another GCAP story. Port of Los Angeles finishes fiscal year 10.9 million TEUs, a new Western Hemisphere record. That's it. This is more containers moved through the Port of Los Angeles than ever before. And again, they're having that issue with getting the containers in and out of ports, on the rail, on the road, and out of there. And, and, and this is just magnifying right now. And understand, this is going to get worse, even though they're starting to catch up. And you see the line of ships off the West Coast decreasing. It, it's, it's about to get worse. And I'll explain why here in a second. Here's a story from Maersk. Maersk revamps their Western Central Asia network to speed up cargo delivery. So one of the things that the carriers are doing and carriers of the, of the big shipping companies is they're looking for routes that have slack on them that they can push containers into to even go different ways. Understand, to get to New York from East Asia, it, it, it's 50-50 whether you go across the Pacific or across the Indian Ocean, the Atlantic. And so they're pushing containers to where they can. They're trying to push them, and you're going to see containers coming onto East Coast ports in larger numbers than we have. We've already seen that, by the way. We're already seeing that. Go to this story right here. More Panama Canal transits highlight rebounding global trade. Those medium-sized container ships, bigger, smaller than the ultra-large container vessels, they can get through the new lock of the Panama Canal. These ships that are under about 12,000 TEU, uh, they're, they're worth their weight in gold right now because you can get them through the Suez, uh, through the Suez, excuse me, sorry, ever given on the brain. Get them through the Panama Canal and get them to East Coast ports that are not as log jammed as West Coast ports. Plus, this bypasses the old Union Pacific here and gets you directly to where you need to be. And so, you know, shipping is, 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 it's like water, you know, cracking a foundation. If you pour water, it'll go find the crack in the foundation. Well, shipping is the same way. They're going to find a crack and they're going to try to get there. Add to it this South Carolina port set new annual record for containers held. Again, we're, 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 you know, if the West Coast is jammed, they're going to start coming into the East Coast. They're going to start finding that area where they can come in. And that, that's exactly what we see happening right there. We're seeing this record increase. I will highlight and I'll link over to this too for you. Uh, John McCowan does a report where he talks about the top 10 U.S. ports. He does container volumes. This is his May 2021. You should follow him on LinkedIn. Absolutely. Just a brilliant mind. Talks about everything you need to know uh, when it comes to containers. Just written a great book too, by the way. I'll put the link in there for you on uh, some of the greatest shipping mines there were out there. But he talks about this and he's showing exactly what happens. If you look at this chart, sorry, I put the new reading glasses, you'll see the dips back here in early, uh, and then 2019, early 2020, when everything slowed down and then everything went through the roof. And you can see how much it's gone up. You know, 51.6% inbound gain in May with port ranges in tighter range versus past. And, and again, if you look at it and he does an index here, there you go. How many TEUs, you know, over over half a million into Los Angeles, uh, 444,000 in the Long Beach Savannahs at 235. And you can see the percentage in train in change, the three month TEUs move to three month percentage change. And then uh, other stat data he's got on here, which is just great. So you can follow this stuff. John does does absolutely fantastic work. I think he's a brilliant mind uh, on this and should be followed. And all of this is playing into the infrastructure problems we're having. Go back to these stories again. Uh, US rail volumes flat amid July 4th. Wait a minute, I just thought our freight rates are, or, or Union Pacific is saying things. Yeah, understand that, that the earnings, this is over the 4th of July weekend, basically did go flat during that time period, but they're trying to catch up. They're trying to play catch up at this time. And rates are a very flexible thing. They're moving cargo. They're moving a lot of cargo right now, but they just can't keep up. You can't, there's no surge that you can charge right now on the rail lines. They're moving as many rail cars as they can. And so they're basically at their capacity. And then this last story right here, this is the one that, that we should be watching out for. Remember back when Yanatan shut down due to COVID? Well, guess what? That's about to catch up. All that shutdown now is being loaded on the ships and sent across the Pacific, across Indian Ocean, 
and it's going to arrive in Europe and the United States here fairly soon. And start thinking about it. We've we've had videos on this. We've talked about Christmas, even though it's July. Start thinking about Christmas because a lot of consumers, but more importantly, a lot of retailers start piling up their goods, start stockpiling right about now to get their goods in. And so we're about to see, again, those freight rates that go back here to the, the, the very beginning here, you know, the $10,000 boxes that are coming across the Pacific right now. Uh, the carriers are charging the shippers for that. The shippers are paying it, but in the end, the person who gets to pay for it, us and you. And so this is that thing. So when, when we start talking about infrastructure, and I don't care what presidential administration you're talking about, I, I, I am apolitical when it comes to this stuff. But when we start talking about infrastructure, infrastructure is extremely important. Development of ports, of rail, of roads, you name it. This is not a Democrat, Republican issue. This is an American issue. And one of the things that China has been doing, particularly with their Belt and Road Initiative, is build infrastructure. They're building ports, they're building roads, they're building rail, you name it, all across Asia, Africa, Europe, you name it, in the Caribbean, South America, they're doing it. They're doing it so that when one area shuts down, they can move into other areas. You can't shut down this trade route. Our problem is we've got this consumer mentality going on where we have to consume and, and, and we consume a lot. The problem is how do we get that consumption in? Containers were designed back in 1956 to be the solution to what was called break bulk. This is when you loaded containers, used when you loaded goods on pallets, you know, two by two foot pallets or four by four foot pallets. Uh, that's what containers were supposed to do. Well, we've reached a point now where containers are actually a part of the issue. How do I know that? Peaches. Peaches is how I know that. Because <laughs> someone decided to open up their peaches in Washington, D.C. and realized their peaches came from Argentina via Thailand on ships and containers, on rails and on roads. And as long as we want cheap peaches, this is going to contribute to a lot of the issues we have. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode of What's Going On With Shipping featuring peaches and, tra and, and trains. Uh, if you enjoyed the episode and if, if you didn't enjoy it, but disturbed by it, I understand completely. But please, please. Go ahead and subscribe, hit the bell so that when new videos come out about who knows what, because if we're talking about peaches and trains, we don't know what's coming on next. Uh, you'll be alerted about them. Go ahead, hit the thumbs up so other people on YouTube will realize how bad it is to eat the peaches they're eating right now and how it's contributing to, to global trade issues. Uh, be sure to share it on social media. Again, I wouldn't have had this unless it was social media. So just an idea of how one little issue on social media can generate an idea and give you a concept for this, uh, you get it right here. So go ahead, share it across social media. Uh, any ideas, any concepts you want me to talk about, go ahead, put them in the comment section. I try to answer and look at all the comments. So I apologize if I don't get back to everybody. Sometimes some videos have more comments than others. So until our next Peaches and Trains emergency regarding shipping, uh, the Sal signing off. <laughs>